Welcome to Gracie Schwartzwald. I'm here with Eric Mente, and today we're going to go over uh, something I had some people ask me about, which is um, how to handle with the guillotines for when the person passes to the safe side. So just as a quick um, understanding of what I'm talking about, when I go for a front headlock or guillotine kind of hold, where he becomes safe is when he passes his hips to the opposite side of the neck. Now it's very hard for me to choke him. Okay, so if he goes to the other side, he's basically walking into the choke. So often what happens is people will try to catch a guillotine, and the guy's quick or smart, he's immediately going to jump to the side, and now you get kind of stuck, and people will hold on to this, and they have a real problem because there's not much they can do with this, can't finish the choke with this, and I'm even in danger of the von food choke for a counter. Okay, So people often get kind of nervous going for guillotines or front headlocks because of this. Um, so we're going to cover a couple options um, and sometimes I'll even go to that position because people are um, assuming I'm only going to go one direction, right, to my choke side. Okay, and I can catch them off, off, uh, off guard and by surprise by going actually to the other side. So let's talk about first how we do that. Um, we're going to talk, I generally will call this when I just have his head, the guillotine position, when I have his head and arm, the front headlock. You can call it whatever you want, arm and guillotine, guillotine, you can call both front headlock, which is technically true. Um, but, guillotine, front headlock. One reason I like to actually play the front headlock position for control is because you're going to see it makes it hard for him to go to this side. Okay, and actually I'll cover this soon with my uh, student Isaiah. Um, did this in his recent MMA fight. Okay, it made it hard for the person to pass to the safe side. Okay, so first thing I want to talk about is most of the time when I go for the guillotine, um, certainly from standing or when I'm not going right into an immediate submission, um, I go for actually chin strap control. So a lot of times people are afraid to go for something because they think I have to go and I have to immediately kill, right? I don't shoot a triangle until I know that I can kill with the triangle, or I don't shoot your armor until I know I can kill with your armor. And there's an aspect to that that's right. But I'm going to go for this position any time I can because once I have control of his head, I have control of his hips. That's what I mean by that. Um, I'll show you in a second. But I'm not trying to lock the choke necessarily unless it's, everything is in place. But I will just go here and control the chin. And when I control the chin, I want his chin running in that line right between my two middle fingers right in the middle of my hand. So I'm not going under his neck. I'm just going to catch the chin. What I mean by controlling the hips is if he starts to run this way, go ahead and run this way, I turn his chin that way. If he tries to run the other way, I turn his chin this way. Not to mention I can manipulate his hips. Okay, so there's what I call direct and indirect control. So for instance, if I want to lift his hip, I can try to push his hip up. I can sometimes push that hip down or that leg down. I can lift his upper body enough, I can turn his head. So right now if I turn his head enough, you'll see that hip start to come up. Okay, that's really important to understand, right? Indirect control works great because I can manipulate a smaller part of his body to attack the bigger part of his body. For those of you wrist lock fans, I turn his hand, I control his elbow, I control his shoulder, I control that far hip, okay, just by controlling his hand versus trying to pull the shoulder down, which is absolutely effective. It's an indirect, but it's closer to the source, or the thing I'm trying to attack, so it takes more effort. So when I go here, I'm going to catch the chin right away. I'm going to go over the arm. Now, I don't like to go super deep. Sometimes I will, but I actually keep my arm down a little bit. Okay, this is so, if I put my arm up too high, pass and post your hand out wide. So now I'm kind of stuck for the move I want to do. So I'm actually going to be a little lower on his arm and pinch it. So I'm here, I catch, and I keep tighter here. Okay. Now when he passes to that side, okay, I'm going to shoot, let's turn this way. I'm going to shoot my arm all the way through, keeping my elbow tight so he can't pull the arm out. Okay, let's turn this way just a little bit. He passes. I shoot my arm all the th way through. I'm going to start to turn the chin, put my body on the ground. I'm reaching all the way through on his hip or on his ribs. Now I'm going to walk north, 
Bridge a little bit, turn his hip. I mean, uh, turn his chin. Okay. So we're here, I'm snapped down. He goes, as he goes, even if he comes all the way, he tries to settle. I walk, elbow tight, turn the chin, and I can bridge that a little bit. Now. And we're here. So we're playing, and I snap him down. He tries to run. I shoot. I don't try from here. I walk. Bridge. And then we can come up. We'll work into our position on the side. So one more time. We're here. I snap him down. I'm trying to go to this side for the choke or the sweep. He runs to that side. He settled. This is important. I want this arm blocked because if he hugs my head tight, I'm going to be stuck and I'm going to be in the danger of a bomb flu choke. Bomb flu choke. Okay, so this is why a lot of times I like to go here first because now it stops that. I come in, walk, turn the chin. Now skip back to sort of these. Now, as I do, I'll usually come up. And suddenly, we have the dars, we have anacondas, all of this is important. Okay? So, that's our first kind of option for when he passes to the safe side. Um, I'm actually going to set this up so you guys can see um, where I force it. It's a little bit like a baseball choke where you can force the pass. Um, so, we're here. Let's do it with you on this side. Maybe playing a little bit, hand fighting. I'm snapping the catch. Now I'm just going to kick my legs through, chin strap, roll, and then we can play everything else at that point. So you see, I can kind of bait him to go in, or he can go. Again, really important that I'm not doing this and reaching high because now post your hand. I'm kind of stuck. Okay. So that's our first option for the kind of wrong side situation into the sweep. 